Imagine a moonlit night in the heart of the desert, the silence only broken by the low hum of engines. Suddenly, the quiet is shattered by the roar of machine guns and the fiery explosions of aircraft. This isn't a scene from a Hollywood blockbuster, but a real-life operation carried out by the British Special Air Service during World War II. Welcome to the story of the raid on City Hanish Airfield. If you're ready for a thrilling journey into history, shoot that subscribe button and let's dive in. In the scorching summer of 1942, the Axis forces in North Africa were in a precarious situation. Their lifeline, the supply lines, were under constant threat from the relentless Allied attacks. The once steady stream of supplies had dwindled to a trickle, forcing the Axis to rely heavily on their aircraft to ferry essential supplies to their beleaguered troops. The Sidi Hanayish airfield, a sprawling complex nestled 235 miles west of Cairo, had become a crucial cog in this desperate supply chain. It was here that the German Luftwaffe aircraft, laden with supplies, parts, troops, and food, took off and landed, their engines echoing in the vast desert. Major David Sterling, the man who had earned the moniker Phantom Major from the Germans, had been observing this airfield with keen interest. Known for his audacious operations behind enemy lines, Sterling saw an opportunity in City Hanish. He envisioned a daring raid, a bold assault that would send shockwaves through the Axis ranks. This wasn't going to be a stealthy infiltration under the cover of darkness. No, this was to be a full-on assault, a blitzkrieg, using 18 jeeps armed to the teeth. Sterling's plan was as audacious as it was dangerous. He enlisted the help of the Long Range Desert Group, known for their expertise in desert navigation and their fleet of sturdy vehicles. The firepower and speed of the jeeps, Sterling believed, would be enough to overcome the German defenses. The raiders would drive 50 miles through the unforgiving desert from a hideout in Bir el Qusayr, then overrun the airfield in two columns of jeeps, with Sterling himself leading the charge. Each jeep was equipped with four Vickers K machine guns, a rapid-firing weapon originally designed for Royal Air Force aircraft. On the night of the 25th of July, the men held a dress rehearsal, going over the plan one last time, checking their weapons, and preparing themselves for the mission that lay ahead. As the sun set on the 26th of July, the stage was set for one of the most daring raids of World War II. The desert, usually a picture of tranquility under the moonlit sky, was about to witness a storm. The 18 Jeeps, each carrying three or four hardened commandos, began their journey towards the airfield. They navigated the treacherous desert terrain in formation, their headlights off, guided only by the light of the full moon. The silence of the desert night was punctuated only by the low hum of the Jeep engines, a prelude to the symphony of chaos and destruction that was about to unfold at the city Hanish airfield. As the clock struck midnight on the 26th of July, the raid commenced. The 18 Jeeps, each carrying a team of three or four British or French commandos, navigated the vast desert in formation, their headlights off, guided only by the full moon. The desert, usually a serene landscape under the moonlit sky, was about to become a battlefield. The silence of the night was punctuated only by the low hum of the Jeep engines, a prelude to the symphony of chaos and destruction that was about to unfold. As the raiders neared the airfield, an unexpected sight met their eyes. The runway lights, which should have been off to maintain the cover of darkness, suddenly switched on. The commandos' hearts pounded in their chests. Had they been detected? Were they driving into a trap? But as it turned out, the lights were not for them. A Luftwaffe bomber was coming in for a landing, oblivious to the impending attack. Seizing the moment, Sterling fired a green flare into the night sky, the signal for the attack to begin. The jeeps roared into action, charging onto the airfield in a V formation. The calm of the night was shattered as the SAS soldiers opened fire on the parked German aircraft. Their machine guns, loaded with tracer ammunition, lit up the night sky, their rapid fire echoing across the airfield. The German aircraft, including Junkers Ju 87 Stuka dive bombers, Ju 52 cargo aircraft, and Messerschmitt BF 109 fighters, were caught off guard their metal bodies offering no resistance to the hailstorm of bullets. The German troops, taken by surprise, scrambled to retaliate. Machine guns and anti-aircraft weapons returned fire, their bullets zipping through the air, seeking out the invaders. 
Amid the chaos, one Jeep was hit and disabled. Its journey ended prematurely. Lance Bombardier John Robson, a 21-year-old SAS soldier manning a machine gun, was shot and killed. His comrades could afford only a moment's silence for their fallen brother. Their focus needed on the mission at hand. Despite the loss, the Raiders pressed on, their resolve unbroken. They maneuvered their jeeps around the airfield, their machine guns spitting fire and destruction. The German aircraft, once symbols of the Axis air superiority, were reduced to flaming wrecks. Amid the chaos, Patty Main, one of the Raiders, placed a bomb in the engine of a parked bomber, ensuring its destruction. The Raiders continued their assault, their ammunition dwindling but their spirits high. They swept through the airfield, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. When the smoke cleared, around 40 Luftwaffe aircraft lay destroyed or damaged on the airfield. The SAS, however, claimed only 25, as it was customary to underreport Axis losses. The climax of the raid had passed, but the echoes of their machine guns and the sight of the burning aircraft would remain etched in the memories of those who witnessed it. With the airfield in ruins and the echoes of gunfire still ringing in their ears, the raiders knew they had to make their escape. The desert, once a serene landscape under the moonlit sky, was now a battlefield littered with the burning wreckage of German aircraft. The raiders, their adrenaline still high from the assault, quickly regrouped. They knew that the German forces would soon recover from the shock and launch a counterattack. They had to disappear into the desert before that happened. The raiders split into smaller groups, each group taking a different route back to their base. They drove their jeeps through the desert, their headlights off to avoid detection. The desert, which had been their battleground just moments ago, was now their sanctuary. They navigated the treacherous terrain, guided only by the stars and their knowledge of the desert. During the day, they camouflaged their vehicles and hid from the prying eyes of German aircraft. The desert, with its vast expanses of sand and rock, provided ample hiding spots. They rested, tended to their wounds, and prepared for the journey ahead. The desert, despite its harshness, offered them a respite from the chaos of the raid. One group, however, was not so lucky. Their journey was slowed by punctures and breakdowns, their progress painstakingly slow. They were spotted by German Stuka dive bombers, their distinctive gull wings casting ominous shadows on the desert floor. The Stukas swooped down, their machine guns spitting fire. In the ensuing attack, paratrooper Andre Zernheld was fatally wounded. His comrades could only watch helplessly as he breathed his last, his sacrifice a grim reminder of the cost of their mission. Despite the losses, the raid was a success. The raiders had dealt a significant blow to the Axis supply chain, disrupting their operations in North Africa. The city Hanisch airfield, once a bustling hub of Axis activity, was now a graveyard of German aircraft. The raiders, despite their losses, had achieved their objective. They had demonstrated the effectiveness of daring, unconventional tactics in warfare. They had shown that even in the face of overwhelming odds, victory was possible. As the Raiders made their way back to their base, they carried with them not just the satisfaction of a mission accomplished, but also the memories of their fallen comrades. The desert, once a battlefield, was now a monument to their bravery and sacrifice. The raid on Sidi Hanish airfield was over, but its echoes would resonate in the annals of military history for years to come.